Hi everybody, uh, this is my 2017 update and I'm talking to you right now because I messed up my arm and my shoulder and yeah, so I'm trying to rest it. The first thing I really wanted to show you was how fantastic Matt Hankey is doing. Watch this video. This is him uh, transferring in or out of bed or something and FYI, these little changes like these things that you can do for yourself, they change your life entirely. They really just add to your quality of life. So I am so pleased for him. If you helped us get to this place, thank you so much. Like this is happening because of you. Yeah. Because it's access to consistent care that is making this possible. And if you want to help more, uh, please go to shreddedgrace.com and click on the magic wand. And um, obviously this is an ongoing need and uh, recovery like this, it's its like there's a black hole of need, basically. So you can go visit uh, shreddedgrace.com and listen to my talk. Click on the magic wand and all of the money that you uh, donate goes straight into Matt's AVM fund, which is stewarded by uh, Mark, who is Matt's friend's dad, half of Mark and Chrissy. And he makes sure everything gets spent on things that work. And whatever Diane is doing is totally working. So... Matt, my hat's off to you. Keep on, keep on going. Okay, so um, my arm is messed up. So I originally had made like I, I spent a lot of time actually on um, doing a video update. Like I got props, I got uh, equipment. Like I figured it out. Like well, I didn't figure it all out. It was still pretty entry level stuff, but um. <laughs> But it was funny, I, you know, as I was editing it, it was hysterical. Um, but the thing is, my computer's being really mean to me, so I had to jump ship. But also my shoulder and my arm were getting aggravated because even just, like, not typing, but, like, any kind of computer work, like, I guess I should try and avoid that. So I'm going to make this on my phone, and we'll see how that works out. And then, anyway, um, so uh, this is a great example of how sometimes things don't turn out the way you thought they would. But it's totally okay. I'm just going to keep on going. Um, so I am wearing this costume in honor of Coach Randy. Our last day of training together was August 25th. And yeah, it's December now. So uh, it's taken me a long time to be able to talk about this because I'm really quite broken up. Even though I totally knew it was going to happen and stuff, but yeah. So um, I love this picture. It's like one of my favorite pictures ever. That sign was an offering from one of um, Randy's people. He totally just came and slammed it on the outside of the glass of Randy's office. And you can see Randy in the background um, training somebody. That somebody actually came from another country where he plays uh, soccer professionally. To, uh, to find Randy to be rehabbed from this particular injury. And so that's like not an uncommon thing for Randy. I you know, spent three and a half years training with him and observing this parade of people just come and find him to help them. And um, the main thing about Randy is that in February 2014, he chose to help me when he didn't have to. He absolutely did not have to, but he chose to do it anyway. And so, although, you know, I didn't know anything about him at the time, like I was looking not for him, I was looking for the, the machine, the Alter G, the anti-gravity treadmill I use, because Trader David had just gotten me kicked out of physical therapy. Um, but I wasn't looking for Randy, I didn't know any about him, so I started to observe how other people um, uh, thought about him and uh, how he was kind of regarded in the athletic community. So I didn't know anything about that. In fact, the first day... Um, I was completely unamused by his presence. Like, I had no idea that that Alter G came with a traffic cop. And I'm not even kidding you, Randy would not get out of my way. I just wanted to kind of get in the machine and be left alone to recover in peace. But Randy had other ideas. I mean, he saw me and he, I could tell he was really thinking deeply about the situation. And I saw him and I was like, um, right, so, no offense. But a nobody wanted to talk to the sports medicine guy because I'm like allergic to sports medicine guys. It's like I'm sure you're a nice person and a reasonably proficient practitioner. But for real, there's like nothing that you could say that could possibly interest me.
because I need a neurological specialist. So three and a half years later, I move and I think differently. And for the record, Randy, thank you for changing my mind. Members of the CRFC, that's the Coach Randy Finn Club, do not despair because Randy's still around and our to-do list is like growing by the day. So we still have a lot of stuff to do. So stay tuned for that. And as a reminder, uh, Randy's website is lifeismysport.org. And in the future, David's website is going to be learninghowtolive.org. Um, that will be forthcoming. I'm going to do that when my arm gets better. As time has passed, after I say goodbye to Randy, the wonderful thing is I still have Sister Maria, that's trainer David, and uh, Smurfette, of course, Smurfette Jessica, my dietitian, his lovely wife. I have gotten quite a lot of comment, like encouraging comments and uh, some repeat questions from people um, that have really emphasized to me that I've made a lot of progress and... Um, so I wanted to do a short Q&A here for the update. Question number one is, so what is going on with you medically? What is the medical update? Um, long story short, we have worked on a lot of things. But the bottom line is that I am very well taken care of by a wonderful team of medical professionals, uh, both uh, physical and mental health professionals. Um, so my hip is better and... Uh, Right now, I'm having a shoulder and a breathing problem, so I kicked off the medical rounds last week, and yeah, I'm getting, it's, it's just really wonderful to have, uh, you know, multiple people I can ask for help, and um, I know that I'm going to get an, an appropriate and, uh, and uh, a well-thought-out response. Okay, question number two. Do you have a blog, and are you writing any more books? Um, so... I did used to blog um, earlier in my recovery. I was blogging maybe six times per week. And um, I realized that the blog was very healing and it served its purpose. But it was my way of saying goodbye to my old life. And um, if you don't know the story, I used to live in Oregon. That's where I got sick. And uh, uh, I went to work one day and I never came home. And... Um, so, yeah, that uh, that uh, chapter in my life, I kind of had to say goodbye to that. I mean, I said goodbye and I didn't want to, but the, the blog was like the long way of saying that goodbye. Um, kind of closure, sort of closure came when I went back in 2014 to get rid of my belongings that had been packed up in a storage garage for three years. And so, yeah. <coughs> I went to work that morning and I didn't see my the things that I owned that were in my uh, my apartment until that day and then I gave them all away because yeah nobody needs any of that. Um, but that whole trip, which was um, excruciating, but it was good. Uh, it triggered my PTSD and I started treatment and I you know had just met David and Randy. I started training, so I had a very very heavy. Uh, treatment and training schedule. I mean, like, I kept super, super busy. And that was by design uh, because, you know, I kind of, I need the training to learn, know how to live. And um, also every hour that I spend with them, I don't have to worry about, you know, I don't have to wash my back. So anyway, um, my PTSD symptoms are, have come under control after two years of uh, the administrations of my mental health professionals and um, really hard work on my part. I mean, that uh, I'm not going to lie. That was like harder than learning how to walk, by the way. So, um, but I needed to train because um, learning how to live, that's the title of David's book. That's really not an exaggeration. And I'll, n neither is life is my sport, by the way. So, uh, like, those are very literal statements on my part. And, um... So, yeah, I don't, I don't blog anymore, and I might be, I feel another book coming on because this is like a natural transition time for me, but we'll see. So, I just mentioned the ideas of um, learning how to live and life is my sport. And uh, that brings us to question number three, uh, which is actually really encouraging. It's simply, how did this happen? And uh, multiple people 
have asked me that but people who have not seen me in, in like a couple of years so they really see um in their words remarkable and miraculous progress and so the question how did this happen meaning the extent of my recovery and the progress i've made so first of all and most obviously there is an extremely high degree of divine intervention in my recovery for which i am very grateful but like the logistics of recovery, that's a longer question that I'll have to take. I'll, I'll be answering in, in a separate uh, format. So I wanted to introduce you to my friend Marlene. She is a survivor like Matt and like myself. Um, she um, was diagnosed with an AVM when she was pregnant. And thank the Lord, she and the child uh, were made it. But after uh, giving birth... Uh, Marlene was disabled. So then imagine adjusting to wheelchair life and motherhood at the same time. And like, it wasn't just wheelchair life. It was like, you know, all these other symptoms too. But then, you know, it kept on getting worse because her AVM was so very brainstem. So she had to go get another surgery and um, then she lost everything again. And her son is seven now, by the way, and so now she is in that space where she's wondering what the next step is in terms of uh, the pursuit of mobility, etc. And so I wanted to um, encourage her, and I like to talk to her and Matt via video because it's easier for me. And then I figured, well, maybe there are some other people who might be interested in this. So I'm going to do a series of videos. Um, the first ones will be topical, like, you know, survivor-oriented um uh, topics like uh, uh, PTSD, survivor body image issues, my the f my favorite pain relief products, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and then there will be some very simple exercise tutorials, be based on that blog post of mine, uh, ten tips for learning how to walk. And the goal of this would absolutely not be to teach somebody how to walk because I do think that you need like a professional for like for this sort of thing, but um. The goal would be to simply get somebody confident on his or her feet because the transition from uh, wheelchair living to a primarily standing and walking lifestyle is a huge one. And there are a lot of reasons to be afraid and there are a lot of things to think about. So that will be, uh, Lord willing, in 2018. So in closing, let me sum this up for you. Um, in 2017, basically, the, the Lord gave me another year to heal, and I've done so on a lot of levels, and there have been a lot of changes, and um, yeah, 2000, 2017 was, um, it was tough, but you know, if we are serious here, this whole thing since I got sick has been tough, uh, but it has also been filled with, with grace, and um, really, really remarkable things that I, I don't even, I, I can't even talk about yet because it's like too crazy. So anyway, I invite you to keep on watching. Thank you for your support and your prayers, and I will see you in 2018.